Hello, welcome. Can you hear me well? It's too loud. Um, today we are going to talk about Empower Your Mobile App with Einstein Analytics. And I'm Shaki Krishnamurthy. I'm the director and of consulting services at Aperio. I manage the integration and BI team at Aperio. I have around 22 years of experience, of which eight years as a Salesforce integration architect. Aperio is a Salesforce strategic partner, uh, implementation co consulting partner, and we are the titanium sponsors at Dreamforce this year, focused very much on customer and um, worker experience. We are also implementation partners for Google Workday, Cornerstone On Demand, and Amazon. And I have with me here Dave Dixon. You want to introduce yourself? Hello. So I'm Dave Dixon. I work with Shockey at Aperio and manage one of our integration and analytics practices. Have about 20 years IT experience, eight in Salesforce, a decade or so in business intelligence and data architecture. Um, I'm also a co-product champion of Einstein Analytics with Shockey at Aperio. And full disclosure, I am not a uh, mobile developer, although I work with a very talented team of mobile developers and our digital uh, studio team at Aperio. Uh, but I am an Einstein analytics expert, so we'll be able to share a little bit of what we've learned with you today. Without further delay, um, the next 15 minutes we want to talk to you about, give a quick overview of Einstein analytics and mobile SDK and then do share with you a business use case of one of our client, the challenges they faced, um, the solution that Aperio built out, which was a mobile app using Salesforce Mobile SDK, and then enable the Einstein Analytics dashboards using the REST API. And we'll be closing it out with um, a brief demo of the feature related to that. How many of you are familiar with Einstein Analytics? So it was formerly known as Wave and rebranded, renamed as Einstein Analytics from summer 17 release this year. And some key features to highlight here, um, it's native to Salesforce, you all know that, um, has the three releases, secure, um, with always the latest versions available. It's mobile ready, um, which means you have access to your data anytime, anywhere, with rich uh, visualization. And it's also Einstein AI powered um, with the Einstein data discovery, which is added as an add-on product to Einstein analytics. You can perform um, what if analysis based on machine learning. And it in includes a predictive analytics to it. And it's also intelligence embedded in your CRM system. It comes with actionable analytics. What I mean by that is you can take actions right from your data uh, dashboards. Like if you're on an account or opportunity, you want to log a task or um, a call or do any custom actions, you can do it right there from your dashboard. You can also embed your dashboards within your page layouts and chatter and collaborate or post or share um, from, from your uh, platform itself. And last but not the least, it comes with, the platform comes with uh, some pre-canned dashboards that, is, um, that involves your sales cloud data, sales analytics, service analytics, dashboards, and plus you can build your own if needed. Next, let's quickly talk about the Salesforce Mobile SDK. It is a tool that it gives developers to build rich mobile app and connect to your Salesforce data from that app. One key feature is it's an open source suite of uh, technologies, which enables rapid build, um, building of uh, HTML5, native, and hybrid mobile applications by connecting to Salesforce. And also, uh, it comes with the security and other features that was originally available in Salesforce One platform. And you can also distribute the mobile app that you have built um, in Apple, Apple Store or Google Play Store because it supports iOS and Android. 
the mobile SDK comes with a modular architecture, and it provides certain features and services at which we're very keen. Uh, most of this that I'm going to talk about, we ended up using, uh, using it, and we built out this app for the client. One of which is um, the enterprise identity and security. It supports a SAML um, and uh, any advanced authentication flows. So wherein the administrator have full access and control over how, who gets to see what data. The smart store encrypted database enables you to store or retrieve data from your local. And smart sync data synchronization gives you the API to synchronize data from offline database to um, Salesforce. And it also comes with a lot of mobile services like um, geolocation and push notification, analytics, and collaboration. Deep linking is, is a key feature that we used for this client because they were struggling with this um, issue. So it is deep linking is a feature where you would be able to move from one application to another application. And we will see that in the, in the demo, uh, how we have done it. So next, let's talk about what Aperio built for this health, health and life science company to improve their sales performance and team efficiency. The business need that this um, health and life science company had was they needed access to their data insight anytime, anywhere. They wanted to access their data offline. And they also wanted embedded analytics. And for their international sales team, they wanted to provide an iPad solution which would have um, rich um, dashboards, context-aware kind of dashboards, which will help them um, look up the partner um, doctor network and also track the performance of the um, doctors and also their sales team. But the challenge was data was all over the place. Offline data access was a need that they had. And passing state from mobile application to Einstein analytics for the context aware dashboard was pretty uh, difficult um, because it was not an out of box functionality available at that time. And uh, Aperio ended up building a solution for it. So the result is a native iPad app um, with using all the mobile services that I talked about, like the push notification, geo notification to track the doctors, deep linking feature, wherein from the mobile custom app, they can move to the Einstein analytics dashboard. Um, and then we built a rich uh, collection of analytics dashboard. And data was also cached so that when the network, when they were off network, uh, they were able to access their uh, information and the dashboards. So with that, I'm going to hand it to Dave to talk about uh, the architecture behind it and uh, kick it off with a demo. Great. Thank you, Shaki. So the architecture is pretty straightforward. As Shaki had mentioned, one of the things that we needed was the ability to access information offline. And that's part of the reason we decided to go with um, a native app. So uh, the data actually is read up initially. We cache that data. We make that data available inside the app. Um, and we can read and write it back from Salesforce. We can do that in an offline mode, store that up if we need to. But when we are online, the client really wanted that rich uh, analytics capability that comes with Einstein Analytics. Um, and so when they're online, they wanted to be able to move from a dashboard, uh, or a move from the app, looking at a specific doctor, and then go into a dashboard and maybe see that dashboard, uh, the initial state of that dashboard, um, filtered for that doctor that they were on in the app. They wanted that context to get passed from the mobile app, the native app, into um, Einstein Analytics. So the code to do this is, is fairly straightforward. I'm not a mobile developer, as I had mentioned. But I wanted to share this with you to talk about this URL string. One of the things you'll notice in this URL string is we pass in the dashboard identifier as well as our login credentials. And so that allows us to fire up the specific dashboard from the native app. But there's only one problem. If you remember, Shockey was talking about the fact our clients wanted this deep linking. And I just mentioned the fact that we want it to be context aware. When we go into the Einstein Analytics dashboard, we want it to know what records you were on when you were looking in the app. And when we were working on this, summer, working on this problem this summer, that wasn't supported out of the box. So there wasn't a way to do this. 
So we gave it some thought, started looking at sort of what tools we had available to us, and we came up with what we felt was a novel solution, and originally is what we were going to present here today. So what we did is we basically wrote those parameters to a custom object in Salesforce along with the user ID. And then we would launch our Einstein Analytics dashboard. And in Einstein Analytics, it knows and has access to what the user ID is, because you're authenticated. And we can use what's called a Sockle step. So a Sockle step allows us to just write a Sockle query against our Salesforce instance, pull the data down in real time, as opposed to out of a batch data set that maybe be, might be a couple hours old. And we could use that Sockle step to uh, create um, the filter for our dashboard and to filter our dashboard. Now, one of the fantastic things about Salesforce is they are constantly improving their product. And so um, at, as of the winter release, they've actually given us the ability to do this all in the URL string. We can just build out the dashboard state with JSON in the URL string. I'm going to show you about that. Um, and you don't have to do all those steps that we just mentioned. But we wanted to share them with you because um, we think it's important that you know about those Sockle steps and sort of different ways that you could accomplish this as well. So let's take a look at a, a, a demo here. Who here is familiar with JSON? JSON? All right. A few folks. A few folks. All right. All right. Perfect. Showing up there. So what we've got here is um, basically some JSON that we're going to pass as part of our URL string. And this first piece here, the URL string, the URL string components, I sort of formatted that so that it would be readable. If you take a look here, you can see that we're passing in what our data set is and the data set value. So we're using a data set called the DF2017 demo in this instance. We pass in what our field is. Our field is name and what our selection is. So Gene Therapy, he's a, he's a doctor in our imaginal uh, org here. So that's what we're going to be passing in um, as part of the JSON straight, uh, state. Um, uh, as you can see, before that, we pass in um, the actual SF analytics string, the dashboard, the org ID, login ID, all that stuff that you saw before. But now we've got this additional element called the dashboard state. I don't know if that was us or not. What we do is, is we then remove this extra spaces out of that. And that's that next piece down here, this URL string before encoding. And basically, we remove the spaces out of that. And then we encode the string. So you get rid of your spaces. You put your percent %20s in there. Um, you guys have probably played with um, URL encoders and decoders. They're out there on the web for free. And then obviously, if, if you're building in your app, you can do this as well as, as, as part of your calls. So what this allows us to do is pass in that gene therapy name, that doctor name, into the dashboard uh, when we fire up the dashboard from the mobile app. So let's walk through that a little bit. So we have our mobile app here. Got my data set. Just checking to make sure we're online still, so we are. And when we open up this mobile app, you'll notice, uh, or this mobile dashboard for, for the doctors, that we don't have a doctor's name set here. When you come in by default, there's no doctor selected. We can select a specific doctor, um, and then the dashboard's going to filter for that. So let's say I select Sean, and now I get my key performance indicators up at the top, my line charts. They're all filtered for Sean. But imagine, if you will, that we are in, um, in our app. We've navigated to a specific doctor. We've gone to gene therapy, just as we've seen in uh, the JSON that we were taking a look at. And what I've got here is I've actually already copied um, uh, that URL string that has that encoded state in it, just uh, for brevity. And I'm going to hit go here. And now it will fire up our dashboard. And you'll notice now that we don't see the additional information. We only see the information for uh, Gene as selected, because we passed that JSON filter state into uh, uh, our dashboard when we made that call. So what did we learn through this process? What were some takeaways as we did this mobile development um, with this app that had both offline and online capabilities? Um, uh, what did we learn out of all of it? Well, one of the things we learned is that 
uh, real-time queries with Sockle query steps are really cool. Now, I didn't actually demo that here because uh, the new solution makes it so we didn't have to use it to solve our problem. Um, but if you need uh, to show um, real-time data in your dashboard from Salesforce, check out the Sockle query steps. Um, additionally, um, there is a broad suite of Salesforce tools. There is uh, um, many ways to solve a problem. And so if you're willing to think outside the box a little bit, even if something isn't um, um, supported um, sort of uh, you know, as, a, as a default offering, you can create solutions uh, with the many tools that the Salesforce tool set has provided you to really solve almost any problem. Um, another thing we noticed is as we were developing these dashboards, we initially started developing the dashboards in the desktop version first uh, because in some cases they were going to be uh, used in the desktop version. Um, and then we created the mobile layouts. And really, if you're building mobile layouts and that's your primary use case, just start with the mobile layouts. right? So begin with the end in mind um, and design with the mobile layouts first. Um, and this next one probably has, has bit more than one person in, in this audience. You know, trust but verify. Uh, we had some initial formulas uh, that were given to us. Um, and upon, as we dug further and, and, and met with some more technical resources, some of those formulas weren't, in, weren't correct. And we had to modify um, how we were doing some of our calculations. And then finally, data sets, architect over evolve. A lot of times when you're doing Einstein analytics development, you build a data set to support a specific dashboard, and it works great. And then the next request comes along, and you're like, I've got 80% of what I need in my data set. I'm just going to uh, add some additional fields in here and add on to it. And you rinse, lather, repeat. You do that three or four times. And what you might end up with is doing some really complicated calculations in your dashboards um, that you could have done in your data set if you had organized the data set appropriately and architected it for those specific end use cases. So if you find yourself doing that, take a step back, re-architect your data set, build a new one if you need to, um, so that you're able to support your dashboard needs. And then the most important thing out of all this is Salesforce is a rapidly evolving platform. It continues to improve every single release. Um, so just as our problem that we initially had got solved in this most recent winter release, um, oftentimes, um, there's better ways to do things um, as new releases come out. So read those release notes and stay on top of it and learn about these new features, um, because there might be a better way to, to solve the problem than the way you solved it yesterday. I think with that, we have uh, two and a half, three minutes. We can take some questions. We want to leave you with some resources. Check out the Trailhead uh, module and also the winter release um, that talks about most of these features available for you. Any questions from the audience? Yeah, yes, sir. Hey, let me come down. Yeah. Right. You can. You can do it two ways. So one would be you would Dick, pass. Could you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Good. Thank you. Um, so uh, what's your name, sir? Mike asked, if the dashboard is using more than one data set, can you pass those filters in for more than one data set? And the answer is yes, you can. It's just a little bit of additional JSON. Another way you can do it is you can link those data sets um, basically on whatever fields you're passing it in. So when it filters for one, it'll filter for the other as well. Either way. Yep. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Right. Yeah, that's right. And so basically, the, the multiple filters, that's the way it is. It'll just be another piece of JSON. Basically, you'll have an array of, array of values is the way you'll do it. That's absolutely right. And they there's a, uh, did we put the document up here? There is a document that describes how to do this as well. And so you can Google for it. And I don't think we put it as a resource list that ex uh, explains it. But if you go and look at the winner release notes, I believe it's actually associated with that for how to do it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be around for a few minutes if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I hope you have a great Dreamforce.